Okay, so now we are gonna take your questions about cooking. And for those of you watching later, I am Tara. This is my mom, Jill. We're the authors of the Dining on a Dime cookbook, where you can eat better, spend less. For those of you who haven't heard, we are cutting up our live shows afterward to try and make some of them shorter because people wanted them shorter. So that's what we're doing. So, yes. Before we start with the questions, I want to say hi to my Aunt Donnie's friend. She recruited, uh, what do I want to say? Recruited. Recruited a bunch of her <laughs> friends to watch hi, us tonight. Donnie. So hi. But, hi, Diana. You know, and I want to say hi to all of you guys. We so appreciate you watching us. We really do. And you know, our, our viewers are unbelievable. We've had viewers watching during hurricanes, when there's flood, when there's fires, forest fires and things. And they'll pop on and say, I'm in the middle of this and we're still watching. And we do appreciate you guys. We got the best yep. viewers and we do love you all. So thank you so much to all of you for watching. So. All right, so I'm gonna hit the Facebook comments questions first, and then we'll go to our viewer questions. The first one's from Barbara Jean. How do you use the last bits of food like jam, tomato paste, ketchup left in containers? Usually there's small amounts. Ketchup, put a little water in there, shake it up and use it in things like spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. Or ja barbecue sauce Or too. barbecue sauce. Um, jam, well, why aren't you putting it on your toast? Just well, scrape it out and put it on your toast. The, there's usually sometimes a little bit stuck in the bottom. Not if you so. use your handy dandy scraper. <laughs> but you could add a little bit of water to it and pour it into your tea. You can yeah. use it in tea mm -hmm. and smoothies um, mm -hmm. to flavor your teas and stuff. Anything or that like you a, would flavor, like a smoothie, or ice you, cream, anything like that. If you, you, you put don't a get bit it too runny, you can use it for like a syrup too mm -hmm. on pancakes. Yep, Karen. Um, I can't handle work, work, working with chicken fresh or frozen. Can you marinate seasoned canned chicken? Yeah, just season it like you would other chicken, just as if it was already cooked. So you could use barbecue sauce or whatever. You could put some seasonings on there and, and cook it lightly to warm it up. Um, you could do it that way. Um, Jeannie, deep frying, french fries specifically. Can you save the oil to use another time? How many times can you use the same oil? Does it need to be stored in the refrigerator? Yes, I do use the same oil over and over. It Now, if there's a lot of little crumbs in there, I usually try to pour it into the jar or whatever and not get the bottom crumbs in there. It us they usually float down and you can pour most of it off. I put in the refrigerator, I keep it forever. Oil lasts a really Months. long time. And yeah. because I'm using it over and over, it eventually does, it kind of like the food absorbs it and it eventually goes away. But I just keep, keep a jar in the refrigerator and I just keep topping it off. And mm -hmm. you can tell if oil goes bad. It takes it forever to go bad. But if it smells, smells a little rancid, then you know, well, it's time to get rid of it. And if you start some. smelling, if it starts smelling weird, it's gone rancid. So then you get some fresh out, but, and it, but it's not going to hurt you, you know, even if yeah, that's, it just, it just tastes doesn't funny. taste the yeah. same. It just tastes kind of weird. So, all right, dear, do you have any comments pulled for me <clears throat> or questions? Uh, let's see. I had some. Well, first of all. Uh, Luana and a few other people saying, receive my cookbook and I love it. And oh, good. So others saying, same about the planner. Ah, oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, Joanne says that the stuff behind you looks so delish. So this is recipe testing for today. We have cherry cobbler, pumpkin crunch. We have oatmeal chocolate chip cookies, chocolate chip cookies, and chocolate cookies. We have... 60 minute dinner rolls. We have homemade Amish bread, which is, this is actually kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> and yes, so that's what we've got. What is it? Okay, go ahead, dear. Elizabeth wants to know, what are your thoughts on a tortilla press if you make homemade tortillas fairly often? Well, if you make them all the time, yeah. I had one for, well, I had one when I was testing dining because I was testing a whole bunch of tortilla recipes. And I, if it's you're fine. If you're going to use an item like that over several times, mm -hmm. you know, a lot, get it for you to make your life easier. You yeah. know, I'm not into a whole bunch of kitchen gadgets and special appliances and stuff like that. But if I'm going to use something all the time, it's worth it to buy, you know, yeah. to get. Yep. Oh, sorry. Um... Uh, 
Do we have a macaroni and cheese recipe in the book? We do not have macaroni and cheese in Dining on a Dime. We don't have it in this edition. It is coming in the sequel as soon as we, we get the, the sequel done. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Denise says, Jill, it's National Chocolate Cake Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine got my cookbook a few days ago. I saved $10 for the first meal I made using the tips. Very excited oh, for future shopping. Wow, yeah. you take 10 bucks on your first meal? That's wow, great. Wow, that's good. Um, wow. A number of people are asking. Nancy asks special kitchen scissors, and others are sent, talking about kitchen shears. You and know, how much they love them for cutting yeah. meat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? I used to have a pair of kitchen shears, and they worked really, really good. But then mine broke on me, so I just had a regular pair of scissors I started using, mm -hmm. and they seem to work pretty, you know, just about as good. So mm -hmm. if you yeah. can't afford a special set of kitchen shears, then just go ahead and use um, a pair of scissors. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, Ludmilla says, I don't cook. I'm trying to find the courage to cook, and I need something super easy. Dining on a dime cookbook right there. Seriously. People who don't cook, this is why we wrote the book. Yeah. It is. College kids, new moms, new brides, people who just never learned how to cook. I wrote the book because I didn't learn how to cook because I didn't want to. Well, after we got married, I had to learn how to cook. So I took all my mom and my grandma's recipes and they're super simple. I was always amazed when we first wrote the book because so many people said they were giving them to their uh, like 18, 19 year old sons to use for a cookbook because there's they're good solid recipes comfort food recipes that everybody loves and the boys just love them and they were easy to fix mm -hmm. but don't be afraid just try just try something simple something easy and work your way up mm -hmm. you know read the instructions and and you'll do fine and ask us questions you know the next time we're on if you have a question something flopped or didn't do we all flop i mean you can ask anybody on here it's just a matter of starting to do it and practicing and learning i mean tars had a few flops even this week <laughs> hey 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 <laughs> so you know, so don't be afraid. Just step out and do it and try it. You can come back. Cheryl says, I have turkey leg quarters in the freezer that need to be used. Would I be able to use those to make your famous roast turkey? And if so, what would the cooking time be? Well, oh, cooking time, I would probably say probably an hour, maybe two hours. It depends on how big the legs are. Yeah. Um, in that case, if you happen to have this kind of thermometer, when the temperature gets to be, a, I think it's 165, look it up for sure, but I think it's 165, then they're done. But I would just roast them low mm -hmm. just for a couple of hours. If you put them on low enough, you almost can't overcook something because it's yeah. such a low temperature that if you let it go 30 minutes longer than it's supposed to, it won't burn or hurt them. Yeah. What do you do with your fridge food when she's gone? She brings it to my house. Oh, yeah. I clean out my refrigerator and bring it back to my mom and Tara. Okay. I'm here's the next. Here's the next test. We got a test. Mm -hmm. Any more sugar? Mm-hmm. This is your recipe. <laughs> you don't like it? Hmm. You added more yeast? Uh-uh. I followed the recipe exactly. Hmm. Okay. Well, I will tell you. you, you this is what? like the eighth loaf of bread I have made. We're trying, trying to find, to find the, the perfect Amish bread. bread. <laughs> it's not bad. I don't know. I wonder if it's a type of, what flour are you using? Just regular store, all-purpose flour. What brand? Just the Kroger that I always use. Hmm. Well, yeah. forward and onward, or onward and forward. All right. Or Aren't you guys glad we're testing these? Yeah. We're, we've been testing because some of these, especially a lot that, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, dear. I don't know if you noticed Bandana Grandma's on. Hello, and, oh, Susie. Susie. And she said, I think she might have been talking about your scraper, but she says, food movers, scoop up cut veggies after chopping. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that what you yeah. mean? Mm -hmm. And Nancy yeah. says, I've never seen the, the digital meat thermometer. It looks pretty neat. Yeah. Mm. And it's only like eight bucks, so it wasn't actually, and I use it every time I bake bread now. It's, uh, that's all I do. Because my bread, I mean, I was tapping it and all that like mom does, but it still, it was not turning out. And so 
once I started using the digital thermometer though, the inside, I mean, the inside is really cooked. We just don't like the flavor of it very well. Hmm. So do you have, let's see, did you have to adjust the old recipes at all if, didn't know if the ingredients be the same examples. Flour, mm -hmm. eggs. Okay, I have no idea what that question is saying. What they're saying is they didn't know if the ingredients would be the, sa the same in the same configuration from the old recipes to now. Uh, same, like flour, egg size, etc. Well, most um, of them are the same. Yeah, they're pretty yeah. close to the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did have to add more specific measurements because a lot of times they just say a handful of this or a... Well, and here's another thing. When making things like cakes and breads and those kinds of things, we've noticed the older recipes and bloggers now, they don't simplify the recipes. Yeah. So like a lot of them will say, mix all the dry ingredients in a bowl, then mix all the wet ingredients in a bowl. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is mix all the dry ingredients in your mixing bowl, just whisk it up lightly, then just add each of your wet ingredients and mix it all together. You don't have to have separate bowls and all this kind of stuff. And so that's part of what we do. We go out and we find recipes and then we simplify them. We make them taste better and that type of thing. So Even like a lot of salad recipes, they'll say to mix up the, the dressing ingredients in a separate little bowl or a jar or whatever. You can just put it in the bottom of the bowl that you're going to serve the salad in, whisk it up, and then cut the, mm -hmm. the salad ingredients. Yeah. That yeah. simplifies the steps and, you know, even the recipe yeah. itself. Uh, how did the bone broth turn out? Karen, it turned out great. Did everything make it into the new cookbook? No, it actually didn't. The cherry cobbler did not, and the bread did not. So those are not going to be in the new cookbook. Um, Happy birthday, Tammy! Happy oh, birthday! Happy birthday. All right, um, next. Did you have a question here while I'm looking through too? No, I'm actually trying to get, somebody was asking about where to get the meat chopper. So I was gonna- Oh, gonna okay. Yeah, that. Mike has a uh, post with all the links. Uh, Frankie, question. In your baking recipes, cookies, it just says butter. Is it salted or unsalted? We always use salted, mm -hmm. always. If it calls for unsalted butter, you can. But I have never found a recipe that doesn't taste better with salted because people usually don't use enough salt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, one thing you might, uh, one thing everybody, these, I keep sharing the link for our post on the website, the ten under twenty dollars, our best kitchen gadgets. That one has all the links for everything that Tara's talking about. I do share them individually as well, but if you go to our website, livingonadime.com. And it's right there at the top of the website. So Frankie, tell me how your cookies didn't turn out because that could be any number of things. So let me know how they didn't come out. Ida says, my new favorite tool is the thermometer. No more guessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie says, I'm intimidated by yeast. I've never made bread. Try it. I mean, it is something you need to practice, but it's fun to make. And it's mm -hmm. like making a pie. Um, we have literally the best pie recipe in the world. I have not had a better pie crust. I hate pie crust, and I like mom's pie crust recipe. I go to places that, oh, we have the best pie in the world, and I want to gag. But here's the thing. I had to practice making pie crusts. It's like everything. You have to practice this stuff over and over yeah. before you get it. Spend $20 get good at worth it. of, $20, $25 worth of ingredients practicing making pie, if you want to just practice on the crust, just practice the crust and sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon and sugar and bake it in the oven to just practice if you want. But just practice over and over and over again. Make 20 pies, take them all to your neighbors, and you will get it down and then you will have really good tasting pies. Uh, Shelly wants to know, how long do you let cinnamon roll dough rise? Usually just until it's doubled. double. Yeah. yeah, usually it's about double. Yeah. Uh, Susan Stormy wants to know, what's the best knife to use to cut cooked meat? I never use a knife to cut my cooked meat because my meat is so tender. I literally use two forks. Yeah. And you know so, what? I've got two knives. They're just little serrated knives. I paid a dollar sixty something for them about 10, 15 years ago. 
those are the two only two knives I use in my kitchen. I don't use a meat light knife. I don't use a bread knife to cut the bread. Um, they're very strong. I've never sharpened them before. I cut. I don't use a chopper because I never had one until just not too long ago. Tar got me one, but I haven't used it yet. And I chop. I don't have a cutting board. I know that's going to horrify some people, but mm -hmm. I don't even own a cutting board. I chop everything. It with that one little size. It's about a six seven inch knife and I cut my meat I cut everything with that yeah. but we don't usually our meat's usually so tender you don't need to really cut it that much yep um Tina I have trouble with banana bread it's either not done or overcooked do you have any ideas to take it out while it's still moist okay first of all it needs to be cooked in the center you need to take a knife and stick it in the stick it down in the center just a regular table knife stick it down in the center if there's anything on your knife it's not done yet if your knife comes out clean or just very slightly just very slightly has something but it needs to be pretty clean then your banana bread is done and that's how you know if it is overcooked what you need to do is one make sure you're not cooking in a black dark pan or a glass pan if you are you need to turn your temperature down 25 degrees if you're using just a regular, where'd the pan go? Oh, oh, just a regular baking pan, then put a piece of foil on top of your bread. Once it starts getting to the brownness you want, that will stop it from browning and it will still cook on the inside. So there, there we go. Oh man, everybody's saying yes, yes, yes. You got to try yeast breads because. Mm -hmm. After watching our shows, they were encouraged to use yeast breads. Most recipes for yeast breads, all what you do is you put a quarter cup of really extra warm water. You can tell if it burns your finger, it's too hot. If it's just uncomfortable hot when you stick your finger in the water, or what do you do for the thermometer? What temperature? Do you know which temperature you use for yeast? 115. Or if you use a thermometer, 115 in a quarter cup of water. Sprinkle your yeast on top of that water and it'll start, if the yeast is good, it'll start bubbling and puffing up and you're, you're good to go. Dump it in with the rest of the ingredients. That's the only thing that you do with yeast. It's not any kind of magic formula or anything, just the extra warm water, sprinkle the yeast on top and if it bubbles up, you know it's okay and it's gonna be working in your bread. Yep, yeah. Um, yes, today is mom's last show. She is leaving to go back to Kansas on Wednesday with, she's taken three of my kids with her and grandma with her. May the <laughs> Lord be with her on her journey. Uh, and for those of you who think Mike and I are going to be having a fun time, we're going to be having a fun time moving our oldest son. So <laughs> we're not going to get, we're not going to get a break. He called today and said, uh, I have to move by the 30th. Okay, on the 30th, <laughs> we're moving, yes. So, um, any ideas what to do with frozen plums I save from the fall harvest? You could make plum jelly is really good. I like to make compotes, I think yeah. is what they're called, where you use the plums and other different kind of canned fruits or fresh fruits, yeah. whichever you have, with brown sugar and cinnamon and cloves and nutmeg and just bake them in the oven. It smells really yummy. And uh, do we have one in the recipe? No, the, uh, but Dining on a Dime, use the strawberry jam in here for your plum jam instead, and it would be really good. And just bake it in the oven this time of year. It's really yum to, yummy to make that. Um, you could also make a plum cobbler. Yeah. Plum crisp. Just plum use crisp. our apple crisp in here, except make it plum instead. Mm -hmm. Drain after, although let them defrost. Yeah. And drain off the excess liquid. You can save it and use it in your smoothies or whatever. But drain off the excess liquid. I would even go so far as to take a spoon and kind of push the plums to get all that excess juice out of there because then your baked goods may not turn out right. If you're making the compote, you can use the juices and if it's still too runny after baking it for slow cooking it for a long time, you can add a little cornstarch, yep. you know, and water to it. And... Dusty Joe, I made the bread recipe and it didn't rise. Then my dog ate it. It must have been the dog. <laughs> so if your bread doesn't rise, either your yeast is dead and it's not fresh. You have to have fresh yeast. I get the big things of yeast for like five dollars off Amazon 
and then I pour out what I need into a little jar and then I put the rest in the freezer and it'll last like five times longer in the freezer that way. The other thing is if your water was either too cold or too hot, it didn't activate it, or if your water was too hot, it killed it. It killed it. So, uh, <clears throat> IR 1003 gave a super chat for a dollar. Oh, thank, thank you. you. And, oh, and Gilbert yeah, Rowan uh, gave a super chat for ten dollars saying, Thank Ooh, you, thanks. just received the new hardcover cookbook. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. That's so nice. So, Matthew, I don't think it's Matthew that's talking. I think it's maybe his wife. If I know if, if it's the same person I'm thinking of. But anyway, my daughter is high functioning autistic. This is a cookbook that has recipes in it that she could do. So many cookbooks have so many ingredients and steps. So here's the thing. As we were going through proofreading the book, we realized I had forgotten to rewrite a lot of the recipes and cut out some of the steps. So that's the part that we're working on. Again, we're not going to be done for Mother's Day now. I can just tell you right now, I'm super sorry. But better to have a good cookbook than a half done one. And that is one of the things we do. We simplify the, the recipes. Recipe. Mm -hmm. There's not, I can guarantee you, I guarantee you, there is not a new recipe under the sun. Mm -hmm. You can invent a recipe and I guarantee you someone has already invented it. <laughs> so what we do is we find recipes that look and sound good, but then we keep working on them like this, okay, changing it needs them. more sugar. Yeah. We keep changing them and changing the directions to make them simpler, and so they are actually tasty. Well, why we push the simple part is because you're going to be using less ingredients, and that's going to save you money. And you're going to want to cook at home then and not yep. go out to eat, so that's going to save you money. This all will save you money in the long run, you know, if you have the simple. You start adding... 25 ingredients to these recipes you have to go out and buy 25 different things to put into this where if you have like just five ingredients and a lot of them are basic stuff you have at home anyway mm -hmm. you know like the basics so like what i'm testing here is the cake mix cookies so i take i'm taking and putting in the book one recipe with over 30 variations of cookies just using like four and five ingredients that's it to keep it simplified because if you keep s certain basics on hand in the pantry cake mixes baking powder baking soda flour, flour sugar, sugar um, yeast vinegar all those kinds of things you can make thousands and thousands of things so we try to make them basic now in the new cookbook I've got a few kind of weird recipes mom was having a coronary <laughs> But there are new things like chipotle chicken, you know, Sazon seasoning, those kinds of things that more people are using now. So I have added those. But they still use ingredients that most people can get just at the grocery store if they want. Um, podcasts? Oh, dear. Are we going to have a podcast done for tomorrow? Uh, I'll probably work on it after the show. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to work so, on it after the show. Mom and I have the podcasts <laughs> shot, recorded. But Mike hasn't got it edited yet, so there may or may not be one tomorrow. Uh, we had a, sorry, a few other questions. I don't know if you know this one. The White Picket Fence is asking, what's the best way to shred spinach? I just use a really sharp knife. That's what I do. Um, I don't know. If there's a better way, somebody, somebody tell us. But I just take a really sharp knife and shred it that way. And Angie says, I bought my friend your cookbook and she got it today and loves it. Oh, good. That's good to hear. And Yay! Marilyn wants to know, how do you make pumpkin puree from a whole pumpkin? So you cut the pumpkin in half, take out the seeds. You can brush oil or not brush oil. I don't. Flip it each half upside down on a baking sheet. Roast for 350 degrees. Now, it depends on how big your pumpkin is. Mm -hmm. If you're using a pie pumpkin, it's not as long as a or big pumpkin. But... How you'll know it's done is you can stick a fork in there and it easily goes in. You don't have to push at all. The mm -hmm. fork just goes right in. So just keep checking every 20, 20 minutes. And then after that, like every 10 minutes, 
depending on how easy or hard your fork goes in. If you can't get it in at all, I'd wait 30 minutes. If it's going in with a little resistance, 10 more, 15 more minutes. Scoop so. it out and after it's cool and everything, and then you just puree it with yeah. your blender, stick blender, yeah. or mixer, or something like that. Yeah, um, Dusty Joe said she thought her um, stuff, her hot water was too hot. That's why I use this. Now, if you don't have a digital thermometer, I'm telling you, I love this thing. Since I've gotten this thing, I have loved it. But here's the thing, if you don't, the way to tell is if you put your finger in the water and it's really, really hot and you can keep your finger in there, but it's warm. If you can't keep your finger in there because it's too hot, it's too hot. Yeah. Karen wants to know, how do you thaw the amount of yeast you need after freezing? You don't have to thaw you have it. To thaw. It's just powder, right? It's just powder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. thaw anything. Yeah. Oh, and here's another new another thing, which I have been testing this and I actually think it's working. Use room temperature eggs for baking. I haven't done this a lot, but I'm really focusing on using room temperature eggs. But here's the thing. I never think ahead to use room temperature eggs because I just don't plan that well. But here's what I do. I fill up my measuring cup with really warm, as hot of water it will come out of the tap. I put my eggs in there and I let them sit for two or three minutes while I'm putting the other stuff in and then they're room temperature. You're supposed to have all your ingredients at room temperature when you're baking bread or anything like that. Yep. Ooh, well, Tina so can't wait for her financial planner. So guys, if you want our financial planner that's on clearance, only $7, only $7 for our financial planner. We only have 40 left of the clearance ones left. So if you guys want that, go grab it at livingonadime.com. Yep. Sorry, I was moving on to the financial planner. Uh, people uh, suggested using a pizza cutter for spinach and Joyce said I use my scissors to cut spinach, green yeah. onions yeah. and sandwiches. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really good. Um, how do I find the podcast? Go to livingonadime.com. Click on podcast at the top. We have some with my mom and grandma on there. Mom and I did some, and then after we run out of the ones that mom and I did, Mike and I are gonna start doing some. How do you cook steak? Do you just cook it medium rare? Well done. I do medium rare. We don't, I don't hardly oh, ever medium cook well. steak. You do medium well. Medium or well. Mean, medium well. I cook mine medium well. I don't like any bloody stuff running all over the place. It just depends on how you Yeah, however like you like it, it. Whatever you prefer. Butter and a little bit of salt and pepper is how I do it, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Diana just got her financial planner. Yay. All right. Yes, dear. Next one. Sorry, I'm having a problem with the link. I'm trying to share. Oh. You asked me to share <laughs> he has a problem with ago. the link. So somebody asked, how do we do our recipes? Guys, we are not so brilliant as I just sit here all day and just think up recipes. <laughs> no, no cookbook author does. Nobody does. But what we do is we go in and we find recipes that look or sound really good in old cookbooks or online or whatever. A hundred percent of them need tweaking somehow. They just do. And um, so what we do then is we go in, we simplify them. They need more sugar. If they need less salt, whatever. Then we go in and make those adjustments and that's how we come up with our recipe. A number of people are sharing Baker Mom's sentiment. You two, you two ladies look so pretty matched in blue. Oh, thank oh, you. Thanks. Um, Tracy says, I love my planner. It's huge. Makes me feel important and organized. <laughs> that's good. Oh, oh, that's planner great. makes her feel important. That's really good. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm looking for other things. Let's see. Uh... Ricky, I don't ever buy cream or buttermilk, so I can't make any recipes using them. If I bought for only one recipe, so much would go to waste. Oh, no, you can freeze. Yeah. You can freeze them. Mm -hmm. Just ice cubes trays are one tablespoon, so you can either freeze it in an ice cube tray or you can freeze it in something like a silicone muffin tin. Each muffin thing is a quarter cup. You can freeze it. Sour milk. Oh, here's another big one we get. How? What is sour milk? Sour milk is literally milk that has gone sour. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have any milk that has gone sour, which you can also freeze, 
just put some vinegar in some milk and it will sour, or lemon juice, and it will sour from the acid. And it is different from buttermilk, but sometimes mm -hmm. you can replace it in recipes, switch them out in recipes. Yep. Yeah. Michelle, I told my mom about you guys, and she's on YouTube, and I'm on Facebook, and now she's confused. <laughs> <laughs> join Hello, the Michelle's crowd. mom. Yes, join the crowd. We're all confused, I think. <laughs> um, yes, and you can also, Becky's right, you can also get powdered buttermilk. It's yeah. a very good way. Yeah. We use that all the time. I haven't recently, but yeah, we, we when I was cooking with buttermilk a lot. Um, I keep a can of powdered uh, yep. buttermilk all the time. And you can make homemade buttermilk. Right here, guys. Dining on a Dime Cookbook has the recipe, but it's super simple. All you do is take milk. Regular milk. Regular whole milk. Whole milk. It has to be regular whole. whole milk. Pour in a quarter to a half a cup of buttermilk, however much you have left. Pour in your buttermilk, then let it sit out on the counter overnight to 24 hours until it gets the thickness you desire. Got and homemade got buttermilk. And just keep oh. redoing it that way when you yep. start running out. Use more regular milk and pour that yep. in. So Becky says, didn't realize that much work went into making of a cookbook. Thank you for doing that for us. <laughs> and Ricky said, oh wow, thank you. Didn't know that, Tara. Mm. And Kaisha says, my six-year-old loves making the recipes in your book. <laughs> oh, that's... Yeah, see, even little kids use our book pretty yeah. easy. They, a lot of homeschooling moms, yeah. we found out, like to use our cookbook. So, can you grab that oh. whole pile over there? Uh, a number of people on recipes. YouTube are saying uh, the buttermilk question, that powdered buttermilk is also a good option. Yeah, yeah. Or did the you whole say that green already? thing. Yeah, butter, powdered buttermilk is really good. Okay, so oh. just so you guys can see, we had some recipe testing things. This is just part. Oh, yeah. Of bread oh, yeah. and desserts. This That's is just, just like part one of it. Chapter. So let me show you just so you guys can see. So this one, mom is like, why are we making this like muffins? This one is the Texas Roadhouse rolls. I have to adjust that one. This one here, so this is today's funny thing. So this is here, I have six bread recipes. Guess what we discovered? They're all basically the same recipe. But listen to this. One is 90 minute homemade bread. One is 60 minute rolls. One is Amish bread. One is Jill's favorite cinnamon bread. The other is Jill's sticky buns. They're all basically the same recipe. But people search for these different search terms. So <laughs> we go in and like today, I said, I think we need to ax all of these use the one bread and just have the different variations. And so that's so you guys what we're know, gonna do. Like my mom and I have spent this past week, every yeah, evening, proofreading. Proof we <laughs> go carefully over, we have to check measurements, how it's worded, yeah. if typos. Yeah. We just do tons. Here's one that shows oh, all yeah. the different things we found. So this is the cherry cobbler recipe. This is the third cherry cobbler I've made. We don't like any of them. This is even before it was tested. This was, <laughs> so this is still looking for a good cherry cobbler recipe. So yeah, there's a ton <laughs> that goes into to writing. And Ina Gar Gardner, all those, Martha, they, this is how they all do it. This is yeah. just how you do it. So mm -hmm. yeah. They, Except they yeah. usually have a company publishers that well, do form. They have a staff of 1,300 yeah. people, but we won't go there. <laughs> Nancy's yes. Windsor, Essex County has asked a couple times, uh, have you ever used avocado oil for cooking? Yeah, I use it all the time because I am dairy free and for me it's a good alternative. So, and Judy, what would you have done in this life if you wouldn't have started this adventure? I would probably be a sane person. <laughs> Michael and I too. Huh? We would like, all be sane people. She wouldn't be a sane person because she couldn't sit still. She would have invented some other adventure. Um, yeah, Lizzie, I can't sit still. Lissy's asking, would you throw out sour sourdough starter that smells like sourdough starter should, but the dough isn't rising? Wait, minute, say that again. Oh, sourdough starter that smells right, but the dough doesn't rise. It's not right rising when she would uses you throw it. it? Away? Well, then it's dead. Uh, yeah, I think I yeah. would throw it out. Yeah. You need I to would. start over start again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shauna says, off topic, but I was listening to the podcast with your grandma and Jill and grandma, uh, with your grandma, and Jill and grandma have identical laughs. So cute. 
And Pam says she can't wait to order the cookbooks. That's what she's asking her husband to buy her for her birthday. Oh, she says, love you guys. I hope your Thank birthday's you. in November. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I'm not going to get it done before. <laughs> I think she means well, the original the first one. one. Oh, the, the original the first one. one. Yeah, the first well, one here's too. what happened with the second one. We were all going. We thought we were going to have it ready for um, Christmas. No, Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Mother's Day. And... What happened was, before our trip last year, I had sent a whole bunch of recipes to my assistants to test, not realizing I had forgotten to rewrite them, and then I didn't send them any of the desserts, and I didn't know it. So now when we were proofreading, I was like, well, this doesn't sound right. And then mom was like, this doesn't sound right. What is going on? So we realized probably, 80 no probably 100 of the recipes mm -hmm. I haven't tested or we haven't rewritten yet and so that's the delay yeah unfortunately and we do test them for you because we want them to be really good for you guys yeah <sighs> who's going home with mom Ellie David Jack and grandma so uh Oh, banana grandma, is grandma going to live with Jill in Kansas or just going for no, a visit? Just for a visit. That's just going why to see my brother. They're going to follow, the kids are going to follow in a second car and they'll be bring grandma back then. Mm -hmm. Dusty Joe loves the Texas Roadhouse butter. She says, awesome and super simple. Oh, yeah, and the Texas Roadhouse rolls. Oh, so here's something funny about the Texas Roadhouse butter. Seven years ago, we were just starting to do our Facebook page. That recipe went viral we went from 6,000 people to 400,000 people in like six months on our Facebook page. Because <laughs> it went viral, it was crazy. So that's what made our Facebook page so big. So anyway, yeah. So Janelle in Minnesota wants to know if my pickles are fizzy, is that a problem? Well, they're uh, fermenting. You're yeah, just making sure. fermented pus. I mean, it's fine because it's just fermented like sauerkraut or kombucha or whatever fermented salsa, whatever you want. It's fermented. It's fine. But if, if I can't eat that kind of stuff because I'm allergic to mold, so I can't eat anything like sauerkraut or anything fermented. I can't have any wine or alcohol or anything. It makes me really sick because I'm allergic to, to mold. But... It's fine. It gives you good bacteria. <laughs> Makes it sound like some kind of a disease. Well, would they be? Somebody else was wondering if they were pickles she made with the recipe, or if they were in a jar. Because if a jar has oh like yeah, a if it's a jar, no one Janelle, no one Janelle, it's probably homemade. And if the can, if the can lid is puffing, I wouldn't use it. Yeah, if it's but, in a jar that's got yeah, a lid yeah, that's puffing, I yeah. definitely wouldn't use that. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, so. Somebody asked earlier um, about BJ. She said, oh, yikes, that's not much notice for a move. <laughs> she was wondering. No, it's And I'm not, taking but... half the moving crew yeah, with me. Yeah, she's taking the moving crew with her, so it's going to be Mike and I. We helped last time. Ellie, uh, Dave, and I all helped, and Jack ha helped. So they're not going to have any moving crew, but just Mike and Tara. Yeah. I, I think she was wondering, because I don't Did you explain that? So BJ got a really cruddy apartment. We were on our trip. He rented this place without us looking at it. It's fine. He's an adult. He learned his lesson. <laughs> he got a horrid, I mean, horrid it's really bad. apartment. No heat, no hot water, literally electrical, you know, problems. So he's moving out of there, getting another place. It's a big mess. But he but yeah. found out that if he does it on Friday, by Sunday morning... Yeah. That uh, he doesn't have to pay February's rent and all that type yeah. of thing. So they're trying to get him out. Yeah. They've only However, got a hundred ton yeah. aquarium to move. But we might have to have him help him get the big hammer out with the the landlord. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably have to take the, he'll probably have to take the landlord to court because they're not wanting to give him his deposit back, even though they have broken the lease a yeah. thousand and one times. So he, he'd go a couple weeks this time of year in yeah. Colorado with no heat. So uh, mm. the rent, well, the rent was affordable for Colorado. It was like, I don't know, 800 bucks a month, which is cheap for here in Colorado. But it wasn't, wasn't worth it. Guys, don't forget to check out Ellie's goat milk gifts dot com she's been getting testimonial after testimonial 
of people who are loving her goat milk soap and her goat milk creams and her little soap nets. We just got restocked on soap nets. If you guys love the little soap nets, you put your soap in there and it lathers and exfoliates and it's just so beautiful. Oh, we just got my mom I love one. It. She is so excited over that silly thing. Yeah. That net and everything with the soap in it. Yeah. So. Uh, why pick a fix? Did you expect, did you expect the new place, mom? Well, we knew BJ was looking he was for looking, apartment. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We just didn't expect to have to move in three days. <laughs> That's okay, because <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> we can do this. So, all right, guys, check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook. Our, oh, by the way, our Get It Together People aprons, I forgot to bring one out, 30% off right now. Use the coupon code APRON30. You got that set up, right, dear? It is, but I didn't, it's not in the notes here. Okay, APRON30. And you can get our aprons for 30% off. That's only $20 for our Get It Together People aprons. We got our financial planners, 40 of them left at about $7. Wait a minute, let me go check my orders and see if I actually have 40 left. Um, yeah, I still have about, about 40 or so. Dining on a Dime cookbook. You can eat better, spend less, and save money on your grocery bill with your first trip. To the grocery store people do it all the time mm -hmm. so 20 years people absolutely love it what can i say so everybody's saying have a safe trip Thank we're you sorry guys. to see you go Thanks. i'll be talking to you on monday though on the comments so oh dear she is yes i'll be talking Better on the comments <laughs> when are we coming back to england i don't know bt dave and ellie and i are ready <laughs> Margaret, are you moving to Taurus? No, mom is no. not moving to my, no. She's just been here temporarily. Yeah, yeah. just for staying with my mom for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, all right, guys, please visit us at livingonadime.com. We will be back on Wednesday. I am doing another grocery haul. I don't know the price. It'll probably be $40 or $50 for the entire week. I'm buying it as if my family was here anyway. Although, maybe I should do it for two. You could. And show we could do it for 20 bucks. Maybe I should do that. I don't know. <laughs> Leave a comment and let me know what I should do. All right, guys. LivingOnADime.com. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.